Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will be looking at writing chemical formula. So, as a new chemistry student, new student of chemistry, one of the one important thing that you must know how to do is to write a chemical formula. Right? So, to write the chemical formula of a compound, right, you will have two sets of ions that you must know. So, you have cations and you will have anions. So, as you are supposed to know, cations are ions that carry a positive charge. So let's use the letter A for example. If A is a cation, it will have a positive charge. And if B is an anion, it will have a negative charge. Right? So when you are going to write a chemical formula, we will combine a particular cation with a particular anion. So for example, if we combine A and B to form the compound AB. So we can combine A and B to form the compound AB. Now, when you combine A and B, the compound it doesn't necessarily have to have one A and one B. The amount of A and B present can vary. So you might have two A or two B. So you could have A B. You might have A B two, right? No. Depending on the, how you get the amount of atoms present will determine will be based on the charges that is present on the ion. So AB versus AB2 will be dependent on the charges on the ions. So now for example I'm going to let this I'm going to write A2 plus then I'm going to write B3 minus right when you are going to write the chemical formula from, from the given two ions, you will be given a positive ion and a negative ion. So we are combining A and B. How many A's do we have and how many B's do we have? You are going to look at the number that is on the negative charge. So we have B3 minus. So when you form the compound, when you form AB, right, you will have three A's. So how do you know how many A's should be present? Whatever number is at the top of your negative charge, that's the amount of positive ions that you will have. So A and B is going to combine to form A, B, right? But within the A, B compound, you will have three ions of A. How do you know how many Bs you have? Whatever number you have on the positive ion, so we have a two here, that's the amount of negative ion that will be present in the compound. So it will be B2. So if A and B forms a compound AB, how do you know how many ions of A are present and how many ions of B are present? Whatever number is at the top for your negative ion, that's the amount of positive ions that you will have in the compound. So you look at B and it says 3 minus. So when it forms the compound AB, you should have three atoms of A. So you write the ion first, then the amount. When you look at A, 
the charge on A is 2 plus. So when you have the compound AB, you will have two ions of B. So whenever AB combine to form a compound, the formula is going to be A3B2. Okay, now let's look at an actual example. So magnesium ion, it has a charge of 2 plus and N3 minus, that is called the nitride ion. So N3 minus, that's the nitride ion. Mg2 plus, that is the magnesium ion. Right? So if you combine the magnesium ion with the nitride ion, the name of your component will be magnesium nitride. Alright, so magnesium nitride is made up of the magnesium cation and the nitride anion. So remember, cations are positive charges. Anions are negative charges, all right? So how should we work out the actual formula now? Remember, magnesium will combine with nitrogen. So you will get MgN because Mg is the symbol for magnesium and N is the symbol for the nitride ion. N coming from nitrogen. So when nitrogen gains three electrons, it forms the nitride ion. So it's the magnesium ion and the nitride ion. Now, in magnesium nitride, how many ions of magnesium do we have? Remember, whatever charge, so Whatever number is on the negative ion, so we have a 3 here, right? So we have a 3 here, right? Whatever number is on the, the negative ion, that's the amount of positive ion you will have in the compound. Magnesium is the positive ion, therefore we will have 3 magnesium. So it's Mg3. How do we know how much nitride ions that will be present? You look at the amount, look at the number that is present on the positive ions. That tells you the amount. Now in the ions, as you can see, the charges are superscripts, right? Now when you form the compound, those superscripts become subscripts, right? So you don't write Mg, so it would not be Mg3N2, right? So you don't know that it is subscript. So this is incorrect, right? So it's Mg3N2, and we ignore the charges. So we don't pay any attention to the positive charge or the negative charge. All you are doing basically is switching the numbers. So this is 2 plus, right? So the 2 from magnesium, right? We carry it over to the negative ion. So the 2 from magnesium carry it over to the negative ion. So what that means is that you have two nitride ions, hence in the formula of N2. And you carry the three from the nitride ion over to magnesium. So what that means in magnesium nitride, you will have three magnesium ions, hence Mg3, and you will have two nitride ions and of N2. 
So remember in the formula, it's the atoms, then you put the number to represent the amount of atoms. So the three here is for magnesium and not for nitrogen, for the nitride ion. And also, you always put the positive ion first in the name. So it's magnesium nitride, all right? So this is our first example. We are going to work the next one. All right. So now, in this example, we have the aluminum ion. And this is the carbonate ion. Now, unlike the example before, this anion, the carbonate ion, as you can see, it is made up of two atoms. Right? This is only one atom. But the rule, it still stands, right? When aluminum combined with carbonate, you are going to get aluminum carbonate. So, aluminum carbonate. It is Al. So when Al combines with CO3, right, we are going to have Al and CO3. Right? The only number that we are not interfering with, or we are supposed to interfere with, is the numbers at the top. So you are taking back Al right and they are taking back co3 right remember now we are going to find out how many aluminum is present and to do that this is where the number at the top comes in right so the two here means that we are going to have two aluminum so i must write al2 now the three here, the three here means that I am going to have three carbonate ions. Now remember, carbonate is CO3, not CRO. The two atoms go together, right? So some ions are polyatomic. They are made up of more than one atoms. So you are going to write about CO3. Now we have three carbonate ions present in aluminum carbonate. Now I cannot just go and write a three here. Because remember now, the two here means that I have two aluminum. Now if I just put the three here, it would mean that I have 33 oxygen. But remember aluminum carbonate is made up of the carbonate ion which is CO3 so our carbonate ion is CO3 and we have three of these ions so whenever you have a polyatomic ion you should put it in a bracket so in that way we know that the number that a transfer here right we have three carbonate ions. So you have to group the two atoms because it's a polyatomic ion. You have to show that the two atoms are together. So C and O forms one ion, which is the carbonate ion. So you place it inside a bracket. Whenever you have a polyatomic ion, say so the ion is made up of two or more atoms, place it inside a bracket. Right, so what we are saying in aluminum carbonate, we have two aluminum ions. Aluminum is just Al, but we have three carbonate ions CO3, that's the carbonate CO. So you have to put the, this three outside the bracket. Now, do not mix up this three and this three. This 3 here is a part of the carbonate ion, CO3. The one in red 
is what we are transferring from the aluminium. So remember, whatever number is on the positive ion, that tells you the amount of negative ion that you will have in the compound. So in aluminium carbonate, we have three carbonate ions and two aluminium ions. So whenever you have a polyatomic ion, once the ion is made up of two or more atoms, place it inside a bracket. All right. So this is the formula for aluminium carbonate. In this next example, we are going to use the sodium ion again with the carbonate ion. So we are going to get sodium carbonate. So again, we are going to write Na and CO3. Now we know that we are going to transfer the two from the carbonate to sodium. So in sodium carbonate, we should have two sodium ions. So it's Na2. Now if you only see a sign, so if it's plus, it's plus one. But we don't have to write the we don't have to write the one. If it's two or more, that is when you put the two plus, three plus, whatever. Right? But if you only see this, if you only see this sign with a plus R. Minus, it's a 1. So, we are transferring 1 here. So, in sodium carbonate, we have 2 ions of sodium and 1 carbonate ion. Now, I said that in the previous example, once your ion has 2 or more atoms, you should put it inside a bracket. Alright? Now, as you see here, where they have plus, plus one or just the plus, it doesn't change anything because plus one is saying that they have one positive charge. Right? So here, if you have a one outside the bracket, you are saying that you have one carbonate ion. So you don't need to put the bracket. So with the bracket and a one, you, this is saying that of one carbonate ion. Without the bracket, Na2CO3. This is saying that we have two sodium ions and one carbonate ion. The fact that I don't see a bracket and the number outside, it means that only one of that ion is present. So, when you have polyatomic ion and the number here is 1, you don't need to write the bracket. So, you don't need to draw the bracket because 1 here is just saying that you have 1 carbonate ion. And if you don't have the bracket, it still means that you have 1 carbonate ion. If you had 2 carbonate ions then you would have to put a bracket and place the two right so as long as you have two or more of the ion you would have to place it in a bracket so you don't need to put it in a bracket So, not all ions are made up of one atoms. They are, can be made up of two or three atoms, right? So, this is the formula for sodium carbonate. We are taking away from this. When the ion is, when you have a polyatomic ion, if the amount you have is one, do not put it in a bracket. Just write it back and let it stay. If it's two or more, that is when you put it in a bracket.
Right. In this example, we have the ammonium ion and the sulfate ion. So remember, you are only using what is at the top. Right. Everything else will stay the same. That means you will have NH4 SO4. NH4 plus, that is the ammonium ion. And SO42 minus, that is the sulfate ion. So the compound being found here is ammonium ammonium sulfate all right so again what should we do to find out how many ammonium ions are present we are transferring the number at the top of the sulfate ion in this case it's a two all right so we have two sulfate we have two ammonium ions Remember now, the ammonium ion is made up of two atoms, so you must put it inside a bracket because it's a two that is here, right? So the ammonium ion is NH42. So ammonium ion NH4 put it inside a bracket and the two. The sulfate ion we are transferring a one to it, right? So we have one sulfate ion. So just like this ammonium ion, the sulfate ion is made up of two atoms. But the ammonium ion will be placed inside a bracket because we have two ammonium ions. Alright? So we have two ammonium ions and we have one sulfate ion. So if you have a polyatomic ion, when the number is two or more, you place it inside a bracket. This is the sulfate ion. We only have one sulfate ion in ammonium sulfate. So the sulfate ion is not placed in a bracket. So this is a clear example of when to use the bracket and when not to use it. So the brackets only applies to polyatomic ions. It's made up of two or more atoms. If the number, if you have two or more of the ions, put it in a bracket. If you only have one of the ion, no bracket. So this is the formula for ammonium sulfate. Oh, for this example, we have calcium and carbonate. Right? So we are forming, right? so this is calcium ion, and as you know by now, this is the carbonate ion. So the compound we are forming is calcium carbonate. So calcium carbonate is made up of the calcium ion, right? which is 2 plus, and the carbonate ion, CO32 minus. So it's calcium and carbonate. Now, if you look at both ions, the number is the same. When the number is the same, they cancel. So you are not going to, for calcium carbonate, you are not going to have two carbonate ions and two calcium ions. For calcium carbonate, once they for any ions, right? When the positive and the negative ions has the same number, you don't transfer them, right? They're going to get cancelled. So calcium carbonate, it's just CaCO3. 
So once the numbers are the same, we are not going to write CA2, CO3 bracket 2. So I'll put that. So CA2, CO3 bracket 2. This is not calcium carbonate, all right? That is not calcium carbonate because we are not transcending numbers. Once they are the same, they cancel. So the 2 plus and the 2 minus, they will cancel each other. So you just get CaCO3. So once the numbers are the same, you just write back the symbol of the ions. Right? Remember, you never touch the, the subscript number. So the CO3 stays. What you ignore is the numbers at the top. So as long as they are the same, you don't transfer it, right? And you don't keep it. So in the compound, you don't have numbers at the top in the compound. So 2 plus cancels out the 2 minus. So you have CaCO3, and that's calcium carbonate. Alright, so we have three more examples to close off the video. So we have sodium ion and the chloride ion, the potassium ion and the per manganate ion. And for the third one, it's the potassium ion and the dichromate ion. So if you look at sodium and chloride ion, both of them have the same number. Remember, if you just see this sign, it means it is a 1. So you only have a plus, that means it is plus 1. You have a minus, that means it is minus 1. So they will cancel, that means the formula for sodium chloride is NaCl. Alright? So that is sodium chloride. Once, once the charges are the same, or the number for that matter, once they are equal, they cancel. So all you have is NaCl. Here again, K plus, MnO4, minus. There is nothing to transfer, they are the same. Alright, so you would have K because everything cancelled, you are just going to write back the formula. So it is K MnO4. Alright? You cannot have a charge here. Remember the charges cancel because they are equal. Alright? And the name of this one it is potassium So this is the per manganate ion. So you combine it with potassium, you get potassium per manganate. So again with K plus and Cr2 O72 minus. Now we know that the two should come over to potassium. So we should have K2. The, this is a 1, so we just have 1 ion of dichromate. So it is Cr2O7. So this is the formula for potassium dichromate. Remember, as I did in the previous examples, the 2 here, it would go over to potassium. So you have 2 potassium ions. Once you see this sign, it means it is a 1. So in potassium dichromate, you have two potassium ions and one dichromate ion. If it is a one, you don't put it in a bracket. Right? So the name is potassium dichromate. So all 
need to do is practice first. You must study the charges for the different anions and cations. So that once you hear the name, so if you hear potassium dichromate, you know that potassium is K plus and the dichromate ion is Cr2O7, 2 minus. And that you would carry the two across and so it would be K2Cr2O7. So the first thing I need to do, practice the charges or practice the formula for each cation and each anion. If you don't know them, then on exam you will not be able to write the proper formula. So practice to write the formula. So that's it for this video on writing formulas. If you have any questions, you can ask it in the comment section. Remember to subscribe to the channel and share it as well. Alright, and click the like button. So that's it until the next video. If you subscribe, click the notification bell so once I upload a video, you will be notified.